Hello again. I just made a video, but I'm think I'm sitting here. I'm gonna make another one. <laughs> Got a roll going. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the four suits, and especially with the way I teach, I don't really use them that much. I don't use the suit um, as much as a lot of other readers do. And to me, this suit has always been um, a function of consciousness, something with our consciousness. There's four basic functions of consciousness. The, ma the minor arcana of the tarot has four suits, swords, wands, cups, and pentacles. And I look at the four suits as the four basic functions of consciousness. I look at the swords as your thinking, the cups as your feelings, your emotions, the wands I see as your spirit, your soul. And the pentacles I see as your material, physical world. So a reading, people come to you with the suit. They're coming to you with an issue about the heart or about finances, pentacles, or heart is cups, or, or they're, they're stumped on something they got to make a decision on, the swords, the thinking, and... Um, and so on, you know, so I mean, they, they come to you with the suit. Now, if, if, a, if, a mate, if a lot of one suit comes up in a reading, sometimes, sometimes the suit will scream at me and I'll, I'll pull it in there somehow. But I always use the four functions of consciousness to decide the suit, what, the, what, the, um, what that suit means in some way. And I also see the four personality types in the, um, the four suits. There's four basic personality types. And um, I think it was called uh, Kershey, Myers, Myers, the Myers personality types. Briggs and Myers, I think is what it is. And um, and the four basic ones are, are, are considered, are called the, the idealist, which is the cups, feelings, the artisan, which is the wands, spirit, the guardian, which is the pentacles, and um, the physical world, and the rational. The rational is your thinking, the intellect, the swords. So each one of us is, is a, we, we are one of these four basic ones. Most card readers, which is interesting, most card readers will be the, the idealists. What's interesting about that is only 10% of the population is considered an idealist. <laughs> so we're a rare breed. One thing about the four personality types, the Briggs-Myers test, you, if you take that test, um, they used to say that you are, that's what you are, and, and you will, whatever one you come up with being, it would not change. I think now they might have changed that, that idea, because I, I know between, with me, I, I'm usually, just like the rest of you probably are, usually, the idealist, which is an NF as far as the lettering goes, is NF is idealist, SP is artisan, NT is a rational, and an SJ is the guardian. And um, so um, I'm an NF. Sometimes I'm an SP, the artisan. But it uh, depends on my mood, I guess, because, um, but usually I'm the NF. And most card readers, I'd say, would, would they, that's what they would be. Here's uh, some key words of what the, the idealist personality is, the NF. They're imaginative, they're intuitive, romantic, kind-hearted, personal. Um, there's the personal growth. They're, they're, they're striving for personal growth. They make good writers, artists. 
They're very authentic type people, very spiritual, and do a lot for other people. So as a counselor, a reader, that's that right there fits pretty close to the type of person a card reader would be. The guardian is the SJ, the, the pentacles type. 40% of the population is the guardian. And these people are very dependable. They're cautious. They respect tradition. Um, very respectful people. Socially established people. They like to belong to things. Responsible, organized, disciplined. Respect for authority. The guardian has a respect for authority. They're great planners of things. They like to join groups and follow the rules. They're very good at following the rules. That's the guardian. Pentacles. The rational swords. They're very calm, very independent type, very logical. They're strategic in their thinking. They're innovative. They're good problem solvers, analytical, efficiently, um, or efficiently analytical. I'm reading this, what I have written down here in my archives. <laughs> um, they can disregard, disregard authority. Because if they think that they're right and they think the authority is wrong, they, they won't listen to them. They don't like to waste time and they're very focused people. The rational, swords. The artisan, 40% of the population. Oh, rational is 10% of the population as well. Rational is an idealist, 10% of the population. Guardians and artisans, 40% of the population each. Artisans, the wands, the very bold, daring, optimistic people. They're playful. They're very persuasive too. Usually very popular. Uh, they're into the arts. They like the arts. They search for pleasure. And um, they don't want to miss anything. They can be charming, usually very carefree, and um, they really value their freedom and independence. They usually do, didn't like school because there you're, you have to go by the rules and you have to do what you're told. These people are usually more, they wanna do something that's gonna be exciting to them. That's the artisan, that's the wands, the spirit. When you're following your spirit, that's the energy of the artisan. And like I said, we're born with one of these types being our, our predominant personality type. Again, I go from pretty much from idealist to artisan. A lot of you probably do too. But idealist is definitely for something I think is all of our strong points would be idealist. The imaginative, intuitive type person, romantic, kind-hearted, um, always striving for more personal growth. They make good writers, artists. I'm an author. I consider myself to be an artist. Very authentic type of person. I'm sure most readers would say they are. Spiritual. And like to do things for other people. That's what we are. To the four personality types. And I think that helps you with your readings. If you if you're talking to somebody about a somebody that they're involved with and they describe this person to them, to you, as the things that they're telling you about them, you're gonna say, Well, this this person sounds like a rational. Or this person sounds like an artisan. And you maybe you could pick up what this person you're reading, what type of personality they are. And how do those two people get along? Those two personality types get along. Why don't they get along? Why do they get along? The artisan and the guardian. 
I say are um, attracted to each other a lot because the guardian is somebody who plays by the rules. Um, very established they're they're always on top of things they get great good grades in school they know how to play the game very well most of your politicians i would say are guardians um they know how to play society they know how to to play that game very well uh most most uh, guardians would also be churchgoers they like to a sense of belonging to things and the artisan is this free wheeler, a free spirit, doesn't like playing by the rules. And um, so they attract each other because they're so, such opposites. The, the guardian might look at the artisan and say, I'm, I'm, he's exciting or she's exciting because she's doing all these things I, I never do myself. And the artisan might look at the guardian saying, I like this in my life because they're stable and they're, they're um, secure. They're, they're, they know where they're going. And I, I'm, I don't, I'm taking things day by day. So it's nice to have that um, security type of feeling established, settled in around you. So they attract each other. But they also... Um, because they're so different, can be um, very challenging at sometimes. The artisans want to, to want to take a chance on something. The guardian's going to say, no, no, we can't do that. Maybe the artisan wants to take off work and go fishing. And the, art, and the guardian says, well, you're not being very responsible. We got bills to pay. And um, you need to go to work. So they attract, but they also conf conflict in a lot of ways. And um, I would say that the idealist and the rational, the two extremes there, in a lot of ways, were very different because the idealist will do things from the heart where the rational, it's all, it's all in the numbers. I mean, if, we, if you were an idealist, as a manager of a company and um, you wanted to, um, we got to cut corners, business is slow. And Frank's been with us for 20 years, but we got to let Frank go. Well, the art, the idealist is going to say, we can't let Frank go. He's been with us for 20 years, very loyal, loyal employee. And he's a good guy and he doesn't deserve this. We have to find another way where well, the rational is going to look and say, look at this is what it is. He ain't what he used to be. We don't need him anymore. Goodbye, Frank. And they can live with that. So they're opposites. One's very creative, very feeling. The other one's very rational and very um, practical, factual, factual. So this, understanding the four personality types and applying that to the four suits of the tarot, I think it'd be very helpful and figuring out who you're talking about and also figuring out who you're talking to. Now, I don't know these um, like an expert, but I keep them in my pockets. And each of the four personality types actually has four variables to them, but the four basics are right here. And all of these four are just what I told you they are. But now each, the, each there's four different types of artisans, there's four different types of idealists that vary slightly in some way from one to another. So anyway, keeping that in mind, um, there's a book called Please Understand Me Too. And I've mentioned it before on YouTube. I would say it's a good book to get. I got it right here. This book right here. Please Understand Me Too. Um, temperament, Character, and, and Intelligence. And it tells you, there's a test in here to show you what you are. And it goes into the four character personality types and the four variables for each one. And it's, um, it's pretty, um, pretty easy reading. You might want to get it.
Please understand me too. And, um, but apply it to the four suits of the tarot. I think you'll like what you get with that. And if you know those four personality types by, by heart, and somebody's describing somebody to you that they're involved with, a lot of, a lot of our readings are relationship-based, and they're describing this person, you could be thinking, well, that person sounds like a, sounds like a guardian you're talking about. And all, as they're talking to you, like I said, you're, you're trying to hide them up too and see what they think that they are. This can come in handy as far as advice, what their challenges are to each other. And um, you might like it. I do talk about the four personality types in um, my first book, Genius of the Tarot. Genius of the Tarot, I talk about it there. And I also talk about it in, um, I think I might bring it up slight, sm slightly in Essential Tarot, my second book. And I definitely bring it up again in, in um, Bare Bones Tarot, my last book. Just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here, what the four suits value. Cups value being enthusiastic, trusting and intuition, yearning for romance, seeking identity, and prizing recognition, like being recognized. Swords value being calm, trusting and reason, yearning for achievement, seeking knowledge and prizing def deference, deference. Pentacles value being concerned, trusting authority, yearning for a sense of belonging, seeking security and prizing gratitude. And wands value being excited, Trusting impulse, yearning for impact, seeking stimulation, and prizing generosity. If that helps. Anyway, I think they could be very handy for you to have in the back of your mind about what you're, who you're reading about as far as other people. The person sitting across from you, as well as the person maybe you're reading about to that person. Idealists are very creative people. What most of us are as a reader, I would say most of you are idealists. Imaginative, intuitive, and very creative. I said before, writers and artists. And one thing I'd like to say, I, I know a lot of people who are trying to get involved with the tarot or people that are authors or artists and uh and they don't give themselves half a chance with it and it's because it's it takes this creative side to be those things and we don't learn how to be that in school we don't we don't really do that and we get so we try it but we like it and we get a, we make a mess with something and we think, well, I can't do this. It's when well, we give up on ourselves too easily. And that's that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Don't be don't be so discouraged. Don't be so easily discouraged with things. You can do it. So give yourself a chance whether it's an artist, an author, professional tarot reader, whatever it is, give yourself a chance. And if you like what you've done, that's the most important person you got to convince. But if you like it, it doesn't make any difference what other people think. Eventually, they're going to see your side of thing and they're going to like it too. So if you like what you did, you're successful. And um, 
It takes a while for people to see new ideas or things like that. Sometimes it takes a while for them to get it, you know. So if you enjoy it and you like it, don't stop doing it. I think it's important that you do. Anything creative at all is good for your imagination. It's good for your intuition. And it will help you as a card reader, too. So being creative is helps you see those cards with useful ideas in them. So that's it's it's good exercise for the card reader in here too. I'll give you one I'll, I'll close this with one good so I'm just basically telling you don't be discouraged. And uh, the basically I'm talking about the four personality types and the four suits, but I also wanted to bring that up about being creative. And I wanted to show you an example of what I'm talking about. I recently, for well, the last couple of years, I wanted to get involved with um, sculpture. I never really did any sculpture. And there's a person called Tom Mason on YouTube who does very well, um, does uh, miniature sculptures and uh, 32 millimeters, I think. And he's, I think he's involved with them. Man, they, man, they manufacture his work. They're for game pieces of figurines of people and wizards and dragons and all these other things for fantasy games. And um, so he has it in his YouTube. He does tell you how to do this. And um, he starts out with a wire figure like this. And this is actually bigger than what he does. This wire figure. And then you apply clay to it. And you just keep on going and building more and more. This is on a block here so I can work with it. And I tried to do this about five years ago. And um, my sculptures looked more like something Picasso did because they weren't looking like they were supposed to. And they were smaller than this. This is a little larger than what he does. And I, I couldn't do them. So I went to this size. I doubled the size of his, the measurements of these wired people. And, um, and I, I just... Um, I try to do them this size and, and these didn't really work out very well. They didn't, I wasn't getting anywhere with this. So I finally, well, well, I got to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Oh, uh, I could have just said, well, I, I, I'm not cut out to do this. And that's what most people say. They'll try doing a oil painting. They'll try doing a sculpture. They'll try writing a book. Try being a, a card reader. And they say, oh, I can't do this. They don't give themselves a chance. So what I finally did is instead of making these small ones like this, I decided to triple the size. I was having trouble getting the detail on something that small with clay and using a burnishing tool to, to do that. So I tripled the size and used thicker wire I said, well, I could probably do this. And I did. And, and that worked. And I did my, um, this is one sculpture I did. This is Captain Ahab from the story Moby Dick. And uh, that's why he's got that wooden leg. <laughs> and um, now this is nothing I, I could ever, I'm not going to be able to sell this. Or nothing, but I was happy with what I did, and um, it turned out it turned out good. And um, for our first sculpture, I think it turned out good. But I could have given up after my first couple of these and said I just can't do it. No, I figured out what to do, and what I had to do was increase the size of what I was working on. And that allowed me to um, to actually make this happen. 
So you find ways and, and don't give up on yourself. Don't give up. And my purpose of doing something like this was just for enjoyment. I just wanted to do it. I did a couple others. I did a Spartan here, you know, and um, it's worked out fine. But um, give yourself a chance is what I'm saying. And basically as a card reader, I know a lot of people who give up very easily because all of it, they're not making a lot of money right in the beginning. Maybe they're not making any money. And they think, well, if this ain't gonna work. Well, it takes time. Or you, maybe you gotta change a different approach, like increase the size of a sculpture to something larger. Maybe working as a reader in this location instead of this location, or maybe not doing, maybe doing phone readings instead of parties or whatever it happens to be. Um, you'll find your niche and you'll find out what works for you. And you can read. If I can read professionally, you can read professionally. And uh, that's a promise, that's for sure. So don't give up on yourself. Have fun with it. You're probably an idealist. Find out more about yourself in this book. Please understand me too. And uh, have fun with it. And I think it's a good idea to use the four personality, basic personality types as the four suits in the minor, minor arcana. So I hope you like this. We'll talk, keep throwing cards, we'll talk soon.